Quick disclaimer, HP Engage Pros are not hot swappable. This means that if you have a peripheral with an issue and you are troubleshooting it, you must turn off the POS before you unplug and replug the cable or plug it into a different port. So you cannot do it while the unit is turned on. Welcome, today we're going to go through and talk about the HP Engage Pro. So the HP Engage Pro is our new offering, it's to replace the HP RP9. So the HP RP9 is this unit here. So it's an all-in-one and the HP Engage Pro is the same, it's an all-in-one as well. They both mount to the same bracketing system, so if you have a HP RP7 or RP9, which is the two models that are similar to this, you'll be able to swap the HP Engage Pro onto the same bracket, and you just have to then do the wiring. So I'll go through, we're going to do an unboxing so you can see what you expect from the box when you get it, which is the box on the left. Once the unboxing is done, we'll go through on how to install it. Now, if you don't want to watch the unboxing, that's fine. I'll leave a time marker on screen now so that you can skip ahead straight to when that's due. Alrighty, so let's get this going. I'll open up this box. Alrighty. So there's two HP Engage Pro types that we sell. One's the 15 inch monitor, one's the 19. This is the 19 inch I've grabbed here. So you'll get this box inside your box. And this is for all your peripheral information, all right? So this will have your power cable, as well as your brick, all right? And you need both of those for the install. All righty, so inside the box, you'll have this holding system. So this here is the all-in-one HP Engage Pro 19 inch. This is the hub. All right, so historically, if you're used to installing RP9s or RP7s where they're all in ones like this, you'll be used to the fact that the IO or the panel that has all the plugins is on the back. All right, so you just plug all the cables into the back of the touchscreen. This model moves away from that and it all plugs into a hub. So if I grab this hub, just so I can show the camera what I'm referring to. Right, so this is the hub, okay? So this is actually what everything gets plugged into. So you plug the power into this circular socket right here. That there is the one cable that goes to the touchscreen, all right? So there's one USB-C screw-in based cable on that touchscreen over there that will go through and plug into this, and that's what controls everything, all right? So when you're replacing an RP9 with an HP Engage Pro, you need to feed all the cables back through the pole system down to where this will be under the counter, assuming that's where you want to put it. There is also mounting screws you can use on this if you want to mount it to the side of a cabinet or something like that, or upside down, up to you. The power button isn't on this though, okay? The power button's still on the screen, but it's on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side if that's what you're used to with the RP9. So, that's really sleek, keeps the cables looking really, really nice from a customer standpoint when it comes to actually being installed. But we'll talk about that a bit more. So. When you've got that plugged in for the power, you'll get a little light, which is just there. You may be able to see it. It's not lit up at the moment because obviously it's not plugged in, but that indicates the hub's getting power. So assuming you're getting power, then you can just turn that on. And as long as you've got your USB-C connected to the touchscreen, it will turn on and it'll use any peripherals you've got plugged in. That's the hub. So now that that's done, let me get the actual touchscreen out of the box. So that is it there. All right. So from a size perspective, let me try and put this somewhere so you can kind of get an idea, all right? So that there is the difference. So like I mentioned before, the HP Engage Pro comes in two sizes. One's the 15 inch, one's the 19. That's the 19 I've got there, okay? Now the RP9 came in two different sizings as well. So it's not like it's one or the other. So I'll demonstrate. We've got the small RP9 side by side with our Engage Pro right now. However, that one there is another RP9, and it is marginally bigger than this, all right? I'm pretty sure that was a 15 and a 17 is what we had, all right? So the HP Engage Pro is a little bit bigger than that one too. Yeah, I'm gonna assume that's the 17, all right? So the HP Engage Pro is a little bit bigger than even the bigger of the RP9s, if you want the bigger one. Like I said, you can get the 15 inch, um, and that's more approximate to what you can see 
right here. Okay. Now, no matter which one you get, it should use the same mounting system. So it's not a big deal. It's just that you'll have more visual space on this one. So if you're a site like a fuel site, we have a, a secondary program such as either FlexiFuel or Visual Console, you will probably want one of the bigger monitors purely so that you can see the pumps and the pause screen a little bit easier. Uh, otherwise, if you just like having a lot of space so you can see things very, very cleanly, obviously you'd want to go for the bigger, better definition monitor. So now that the unboxing's done, let's go through the installation. So installation wise, we talked about the hub before in our unboxing. So if I grab our hub, you can see it there. And the one thing I mentioned as well was the USB-C. So the USB-C is the cable that you can see coming out of the bottom of the HP Engage Pro right here. That is what needs to get plugged into the hub, okay? So if I just quickly undo this, we have a USB-C screw-in cable, all right? Now, what I wanted to point out, and I'll try and get close here so you can see it. So there is our hub. Now you may notice there's a USB-C on the far left and a USB-C here, all right? Now what you'll notice, little writing, you may or may not be able to see it on the camera there. I'll try and get a shot for you. Yeah, it's not seeing it too well. Underneath the one next to the power socket is a 140 watt, okay? That's the one you wanna plug in from the screen, all right? And you screw it in just so that it doesn't pull out because like I said, that one, that one cable from the touch screen is what controls pretty much everything that the computer has connection to. It gets power through this hub, it sees the peripherals through this hub, and it uses this cable to do that. Okay, so you wanna make sure it is screwed in. Now, that other screw-in cable that we were talking about just before, that a lot of people do get confused, that is for the display. So if you have a customer display, like the one up there on top of the RP9, you'll have a USB-C to VGA or another type of display converter, okay? And this is why our sales team will discuss with you what monitors you may have so that they know more or less what display adapter you need. So the USB-C will screw into this and it'll go to another display type and you just plug into that like you would any other computer, all right? Now, you do wanna leave this step for last, okay? So what you would typically do from an installation perspective, if you have an RP9 or an all-in-one, you would want to actually see under the counter where you want to mount this. This is the first and foremost thing you want to get done, the hub, okay? So if I just unscrew this a little bit and unplug it, I will explain why. Okay, so we've got our, if we look under the counter, we've got our scanner scale, we have our cash drawer. All right, so we need to think of a place to put the hub. In my case, I could mount it upside down up here somewhere on the side. I could mount it upside down here. Now, up to you on how you wanna do this. It's an individual preference. I would recommend, even though it won't look as nice under the counter, that the ports point to you. So however you do this, you want it sitting or mounted so that you can see the ports, kind of like this where I've got it just on top of the cash drawer. Reason being that if you have it the other way, while that will look neater because the cables aren't going over it to plug in, it will cause issues if you need to troubleshoot. So if a receipt printer stops working, for example, the first thing that support will tell you to do is unplug and replug the cable, which is this 24 volt red plug right here. Now that's nice and easy to see from a troubleshooting perspective when it's pointing towards you. However, if it's pointing like this, you're now gonna have to try and move this connected to all the cables to see which one is the 24 volt port. So I do recommend having it like that. Once you've chosen a spot, what you'll do is you'll start unplugging all the cables from your RP9, all right? So you'll start unplugging all of your cables from the touchscreen and feeding them back through the pole underneath and plug them all in to your hub. Once that's done, unscrew your RP9 from the back of its mount and then put the new one in. So here is a spare mount that I had because I'm not actually gonna take this one off the pole. So here's a spare mount that I had. This is our generic use one, it's a space pole. So if I was to grab my 19 inch HP Engage Pro and quickly stick it up this way so you can have a look, you will see it's got a mounting plate with the four screws. All right, so you can see the four screws there. 
generic mounting plate means what I can do is put it on exactly like that and screw it in with the screws that are already holding the RP9 in, okay? So you just need to unscrew the RP9, put this one in position, screw it in. I'd recommend using two people for that because it's easier, unless you want to take the actual mount off the pole, but that does require you taking off the customer display as well, which can be a bit of work. And that's about it. So at that stage, once you've got this mounted on the position, you would run your one cable, singular cable, through to your hub and screw it in, which we talked about earlier. And then you would need to do that for your customer display if you have one mounted on top like this. It would go through to the other USB-C we talked about, the one that was on the left. So that one is for your point of sale. That one is for your customer display. Plug everything else in. Circle hole goes in, circle plug goes into the circle hole, so on, so on, either color match it or size match it. And then to turn it on, these point of sales are slightly different than the RP7s and RP9s. So on the RP9, there used to be a button on the right hand side. However, for the Engage Pros, they are actually on the left here. So once you've got it all screwed in, click that button. There is a white LED in the button. So once you click it, you should see that light up. So at that stage, I'll leave you with it. Please call us at 1-800-020-946 if you have any problems and we can guide you through it. And have a good one. Cheers.